Hey cosplayers, just the cosplay here with some wonky shoulders that I have. I have to get my Velcro and attach these things. So this is what they look like. And I'm very happy with them. And what I used is this old gym mat, well, multiple old gym mats, and some two millimeter craft foam that you can pick up from any store. And I'm gonna let you guys go pretty soon. I just wanted to let you know, give you a tip before you start, that these two are different in the spike region. These were made of craft foam, and these are made of styrofoam. And you can tell the difference if you look really closely, or maybe even not. But I would prefer you guys do the craft foam if you want to do these little details that you see, the gouge marks that add this really cool effect. But if not, styrofoam is good too. Just a little bit harder to work with. I just went back and did the craft foam and I liked it more. But that's just a tip. It's totally up to you guys. So anyway, and down below, I will have a whole list of everything that I use in this tutorial so that you don't have to try to keep up with me because I use all kinds of things. So anyway, let's get started. First thing we'll do is draw this thing out. Now tape your template down to your phone and trace it. Using your utility knife, cut it out on your self-healing mat. And it is okay if this is a really rough cut and your edges are really jagged because we're going to Dremel everything out later. And this is a little bit tricky. You're going to slice out a V in your shoulder, but you're not going to go all the way through to your self-healing mat. You're just taking out a portion so that you can barge them together or contact cement them together and they will stick. And you see as I fold that up, if it's contact cemented, it will actually stay up. And feel free to cut more if necessary. I think I was a little bit too conservative with my cut. And before I contact cement that crease together, I'm gonna go ahead and shape it to see if that is a really good shape for me. And it seems to work, so let's go ahead and glue this together. So my contact cement that I'm using is Weld Wood, and it's DAP brand, and it's very, very cheap if you can get it at Lowe's or maybe Walmart, but I know I got mine at Lowe's. So use a scrap piece of foam and squeegee it in until it's very thin. Now, as you can see, when you push this together, it needs to appear as if it's dry, not tacky at all because it won't stick and it will be a huge, huge mess. So just wait for it to dry. It usually takes 60 seconds at most and then press it together. And this takes a little bit of patience, but just shape this thing until it's finally how you like it. And 
Marking the halfway point, we're going to extend onto these shoulders. Make sure it fits too before you stick it on. Kind of looks like a duck bill. <laughs> Here we are notching out V's so that we can cut those V's out and shape this thing so that it's more rounded. And I end up doing three V's per shoulder. Right now, time to put our contact cement and squeegee it in and press it together. You might be wondering why I'm using the word barge. That was the original contact cement that I was using, but I did find this weld wood dap that was literally like four times cheaper, so I still call it barge. And then very carefully, once it's dry, press it together. So now we're going to add a detail that goes across this to kind of hide this crease. And I believe from now on, I'm only showing me doing one shoulder because it got kind of extensive doing two and it wasn't really necessary since they're the same. I'm 
make sure that fits. And once it does, we can go ahead and edit this one. All I'm doing here when I'm cutting is I'm making it thinner on the bottom and wider in the middle. This is a very minor detail. Alright, now we're going to get down to these details, which get very, very extensive and very elaborate, but so worth it. And this is actually what is gonna hold our spikes. And let's go ahead and start making them. This is how you make your styrofoam ones. It's a huge, huge mess, but it's also fun. And we're just gonna take our Dremel and Dremel this into a spike. All in all, I think you make 10 of them if you're doing styrofoam for both. And I did mention you can glue EVA foam together, which is just those gym mats. And it takes a whole lot longer, but I like it better. Make sure your blue strip or your one inch strip fits around your shoulder here and mark where you want your spikes to go. If you're doing five, I suggest doing one right down the middle and then two on each side. So you'll see now we're going to go back and forth between contact cement and dremeling and that's necessary because you can't dremel everything at once because you might run into details that you didn't want dremeled or something like that. So you kind of have to switch back and forth and back and forth. So here we're gluing our spikes and you cannot use contact cement on styrofoam. It's a little picky. It will completely dissolve so you have to use hot glue. So line up a two millimeter craft foam piece and just mark exactly where your spikes are against it. And then draw X's into your, your little dots that you made. And very carefully, Place this on top of your spikes and push it down. And now we're just going to glue this thing down. If you are new to contact cement, just realize that contact cement sticks to only contact cement. So you have to put it on both surfaces that you want to stick together. You can't just put it on one, it won't stick.
Another tip about contact cement is when it feels dry to the touch, it is ready to be stuck together, which is kind of opposite of how glue works. And cut off any excess. And here I'm just gluing any points down that are kind of sticking out. And these are the gash details that I really, really like because when I paint black inside of it, it just looks super cool. This is how styrofoam works. Uh, when you do your craft foam, if you do the craft foam version, it's a lot easier because styrofoam tends to kind of flake off. And if you're using styrofoam, make sure you Mod Podge before you use Plasti Dip because Plasti Dip like barrage will melt the styrofoam. So lay it on thick. Moving on, we're going to cut half inch strips. And these are supposed to fit across just like that. And for even smaller details, we're going to cut quarter inch strips that are a little bit longer because we need it to line our shoulder just like that. Drawing minor details here. These are the details that I was drawing just now, and these are the details all in all that I needed to go ahead and start our shoulders. So here we go with barge and dremeling. Lots of barge and lots of dremeling. So this can be a little tricky. Luckily, barge is pretty strong whenever you stick things together. So just line it up with your quarter inch strip and just outline it. Like I said, if this is jagged or rough around the edges, that's okay. We're going to dremel it out and it's going to look brand new. So when dremeling, you're just taking off that sharp 90 degree edge and smoothing it out. 
and then taking off any kind of jagged edges that might be bothering you. Here it looks like when it's all dremeled up. And we're gonna continue with dremeling. I don't know why, but this is one of the most satisfying points. I love making this little swirl here. I do add a little quarter inch piece to that crease. I just don't like the way it looks, so I'm just gonna hide it. Adding our spikes, we're gonna line up the middle with the middle part here and just wrap it around. I missed my mark a little bit, but that's okay, I can hide it. And cut off your excess. We have one more thing to do before we plasti dip. It's like a little pendant that sits in the front of your shoulder here. And it's almost impossible to get a perfect circle, but like I said, with our Dremel, we can get this thing right. With our two millimeter craft bow, I'm gonna layer this thing, just adding a little outline to it and a small spherical detail to the middle.
So I added a little piece of foam in the middle of my shoulder here so that I had something to stick this onto better than just the outsides. So that's why that little chunk is there. Attaching our pendant. We now have our shoulder and we're ready to plasti dip it. So let's go outside. Just get some really good layers of plasti dip, especially on your spikes because you really don't want those to break off. And there we have it. I'm going to time lapse mo most of our painting because it is a crazy, unbelievable amount of painting. So hopefully you can get a good idea of how I do paint this just by my time lapse because it would take forever if I did it in real time. So basically all the raised, the highest raised parts are gold. And then the deeper you go, it gets darker. So I go with a bronze black ratio, just kind of how I like it. I mix it and I mix it until I like the color. And then I go ahead and add that in. And this goes almost everywhere. This is kind of my primary color of my costume. So I end up layering this. This is the first layer of this color, and then I layer it a second time, which I really like a whole lot. I feel like that really gets a great color. So now I'm gonna paint my claw or my teeth marks white, which I realize in the end isn't super duper necessary, but I do like the effect that it adds. It's not too dark when I paint the red and the black over it. And so that being said, don't stress out if it's not too white. I end up layering it three times, which in the end is unnecessary, but I was just kind of seeing how it worked. I didn't know I was gonna be painting it kind of a bloody red. I just didn't like the way the white looked too much. I wanted it to look more like evil and creepy. And so I achieved that with the bloody red later. This is probably my favorite part. I get to just kind of make a mess with the black color. You kind of just paint it wherever and then rub it off if it looks too dark and don't if it doesn't. So you're just antiquing things. You're adding a lot of black to places that probably look like maybe they were hit in battle or just places that you can't get clean very easily. And so you can really make this your own. You can make this look as dirty or as clean as you like and I kind of I like it to look like it's kind of war-torn so I end up using a lot of black but
So you can see I'm painting red into these teeth or, or claws or whatever they might be. Uh, I actually end up later mixing black and red and it just looks way cooler. It's much more Diablo 3. And if you're using craft foam, you can gouge after you paint, which I like better too because you get an idea. And just take your Dremel and that sharp head and just kind of however you want. Just gouge it. And after you gouge it, just add black into the cracks here and wipe it away. And once your paint is done, you guys can seal it with whatever kind of sealer you like. And enjoy your new shoulders. And we're gonna continue making this armor set. I think next we're working on our sword and soon we'll have a whole set. Thank you guys so much for following me and watching me make these awesome shoulders. I hope you like them and I hope that you can make your own.